Welcome viewers in this video we are going to do design of equipment support structure using euro code using robot structural analysis in this we are going to do a demonstration on how to do the design calculation for equipment support structure for 400 kv post insulator this is part 1 in this we are going to look what are the inputs required for the design and we are going to calculate the self weight conductor forces wind on equipment conductor structure snow loads so with this the part 1 get completed in part 2 we will be looking on seismic load a centerness check load combinations and finally we are going to apply these loads into that robot structural model analysis we are going to design the vertical support structure for this 400 kv equipment support structure with that part 2 also will get completed part 2 will be uploaded in following weeks after this part 1 let we look into that excel calculation for this input self weight and conductor forces wind and snow load calculation on the screen you can see an excel sheet which we are going to do the design of 400k post insulator support structure with the european standard in robot structural analysis so these are the input required to start our design first one is a system voltage where we are we can consider as 400 kv second one is equipment the equipment is a post insulator we are going to consider here and talking about the conductor details we need weight diameter of the conductor for that we need to decide the type of conductor here there are list of conductor we can consider acsr 305 39 duck or we can consider this aluminum conductor 1095 which is having the diameter as 0.04 we are having a table listed here for the conductor so which is having 43 mm of diameter for aluminum conductor 1095 we can consider this for our conductor type and weight of the conductor per meter is 3.02 kg which is extracted from this table so if we want to design it for acsr hawk so these are the parameters we can consider number of conductor per phase as two numbers it's depend upon our requirement of the electrical configuration the effective span of conductor is between there are if there is a two equipment adjacent to this post insulator we need to take a center to center distance of both the side of the conductor span so we are considering 4 meter sag percentage consider generally this will range from 0 to 5 percent 0 means the sag tension will very high or 1 5 means the sag tension is very low sag due to self weight is nothing but it is a simple calculation 5% we have considered that divided by 100 and multiplied by the span 4 meter we are getting 0.2 meter that is 200 mm of sag equipment details we need to get from the equipment manufacturer drawing say for example in the picture we are showing here so diameter of the equipment is a 33 330 mm or 0.33 meter weight of equipment is 350 kg which we can get from the manufacturer drawing height of the equipment is 3.30 meter so this information we need to get from the equipment manufacturer drawing next about the structural details so for structure we can consider the square hollow section as per european standard whereas this square hollow section is of cold formed welded section as per en 10219 standard so the grade of structure we can consider 355 generally for european standard there are four grade 235 275 355 and 450 so we can consider 355 for our calculation purpose weight of a structure per meter it 
is calculated by default from the drop down list which we are gathering here this here you can see the table for the circular hollow section which is having the physical parameters of the structure members width thickness mass area ixx ioe ry rx z s s is a section properties so here you can find in the fourth column the mass of the member so that it will pick from that and we are considering some 20 percent for plates that is mounting plate and base plate we are considering 20 percent extra so this is a weight of structure per meter total height of the structure plus equipment total height we are adding this uh, four meter is a structure height and equipment height plus half of the diameter of the conductor so these are the effective height so on the picture you can see the equipment height and the structure height next one is the load calculation loads are generally we can classify it as a self weight conductor loads uh, short circuit forces wind load snow and seismic so there are five types of loads we are going to calculate now so start with the sulfate weight of equipment we need to consider as well the manufacturer drawing weight of conductor is nothing but the numbers of conductor which we are providing into length into unit weight so we already know the input weight of conductor number of conductor per phase and the effective span of conductor so multiplying all this we are getting 7.8 kg self weight of structure is uh, we already defined that structure as uh, 219.1 into 8 circular hollow section that into height the weight for unit weight for the same is 49.92 kg per meter that into 4 which we are having 199.7 kg so total weight in kilo newton we are multiplying into 9.8 divided by 1000 is 5.47 km and the workmanship we need to consider as 1 km this is as per the standard practice as per European even in most of the standards we used to have some 100 kg or 150 kg or 1 km as a workmanship with the kit so this is for maintenance and installation purpose second type of loads are conductor loads one is conductor tension so before going to fix this conductor tension we need to know that conductor deviation in horizontal and vertical some customer don't bother about this conductor deviations because in a three phase of equipment suppose this is a three phase equipment having a conductor but in the other side suppose it is a transformer having a bushing at a different location the conductor will have some deviation for example for a left side face will have conductor deviation like this and the middle conductor may be in straight line no problem but in the right side face also have some deviation so suppose this 400 kb pi is nearby to the transformer or any pass equipment so there will be some conductor deviation in horizontal angle this entire we in plan you need to see so this is a plan view so these are the pi support structure which we are going to design now assume this is a transformer this yellow color or transformer bushing so if transformer bushing is far away or not aligned in the same axis of pi then the conductor will have some deviation in horizontal similar like in vertical also suppose the transformer bushing is here in this level and the conductor or pi is at a lower level then there will be some push 
generally this won't be happen this pa will be in higher level so here the vertical inclination will be there so that is what we are considering here so horizontal and vertical we can consider 10 as 10 degree as a deviation for both the vertical and the horizontal position for equipment support structure generally it is not a major thing to consider this deviation at all because the distance between this conductor are 4 meter also the conductor deviation and short circuit forces are very small when compared to the gantry structures so this deviation we need to consider especially in gantry structure because there the major impact that the transverse force will heavier that will play a big role but let me consider for our effective calculation so next is we can find out the conductor tension for calculating the conductor tension there is a simple formula wl square by 8 into sac so this is without considering the ice and wind so here w is a weight of conductor per kg here we are providing two numbers of conductor so 2 into 0 0.98 kg per meter into so l is a l square l is a 4 4 meter so l square divided by 8 and the same to be divided by the sac and after multiplying with 9.81 divided by 1000 we are getting 0 0.2 kilonewton as a conductor tension so this is a simple formula like a simply supported beam having a uniformly distributed load we used to apply wl square by 8 as a bending moment in that we need to divide with the deflection so that we will be getting the force in kilonewton as a sac tension so this is without deviation say for example if it is a middle phase we need to consider this 0.2 kn where there is no deviation conductor deviation and in kind of with conductor deviation say for example the right and uh, left hand side faces there are some horizontal deviation and considering the vertical deviation also so this is a formula to calculate uh, the longitudinal force when the conductor is deviated so conductor deviation in without uh, sir conductor forces sac tension in without deviation into the cos a horizontal angle into cos vertical angle will give you 0.2 kn similar like for transverse side it is a sin h into cos v so delta h is nothing but the horizontal deviation delta v is the vertical deviation so by applying this formula we are getting the conductor tension forces in longitudinal transverse and vertical direction next similar like we need to calculate the short circuit force but the short circuit force required many parameters like fault current phase to phase distance icing so a lot of parameters we need to consider that is related to the electromechanical parameters we look into this detail about how to calculate the short circuit force in upcoming videos but we can consider right now is a 6 kn as a tentative because the calculation of short circuit force will take more than half an hour to explain similar like this uh, short circuit force also we need to consider the longitudinal transverse and vertical in case of conductor with uh, deviations like in right and left wing left side face so similar approach like in conductor tension calculation cos delta h into cos delta v for longitudinal cos v into sin h for transverse sin v to be multiplied with the scf without deviation to calculate vertical in case of with conductor deviation 
Next is wind load cases. For this wind load cases, we already discussed in our previous video about how to calculate the wind uh, wind pressure from the fundamental value of the basic velocity as per European standard. The link for the video is given in the description. You can find the explanation about that. So up to here we had seen already in that video. So from here we need to look now. These are the few steps we need to calculate to find the force coefficient for each individual part like for example conductor equipment and structure. So here that peak wind velocity we need to calculate in order to find the Reynolds number value. So for that it is a reverse calculation of peak velocity pressure to the peak wind velocity or speed. So for that we are going to apply the same formula which we had used here to find the basic velocity pressure 0.72 kN per square meter. So to convert this kN per square meter we are we need to apply a reverse calculation similar like this formula. Here it is half into rho into Vb square by uh, thousand. In this case, we need to do the reverse, like multiplying with the thousand and divided by the rho, that is a density. It's a similar like that. A denominator should go to a numerator, and a numerator should go to denominator by converting this kilonewton per square meter to meter per second. So that is what calculated here. So this speed this wind speed is 52.15 meter per second this a peak wind velocity or peak wind speed but here one more wind speed we are having is a basic wind velocity so that is a difference so we are converting this one to here in order to find out the Reynolds number so for a Reynolds number calculation in European standard class 7.1.1 in the notes it is given for that page number 69 we need to refer in the right hand side pdf file so here you can see this uh, circular cylinders the external pressure coefficient is given in a renal number bvz by e into divided by rho is the kinetic viscosity of the air v is equal to 15 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square per second so using this formula we are calculating this so Vze is the peak velocity which is 52.15 meter per second in our case. So applying this into the equation we are having the Reynolds number for conductor and the equipment separately like 0.7 into 10 to the power of 5. And for equipment it is 11.47 into 10 to the power of 5. It is simply applying this formula into this value. So next one is we need to find out the equivalent surface roughness for that table 7.13 that is page number 73 to be referred. So here is the table. So that equivalent roughness factor value for various surface materials is given here. So we need to consider accordingly. So for galvanic structure it is 0.2 mm here it is so this is a galvanist structure so we are considering 0.2 mm and k by b value we need to find out so just we are dividing this k 0.2 mm divided by the D is a diameter of the conductor or diameter of the equipment respectively. So by applying that we are getting the value of equivalent surface roughness factor for conductor and equipment 100 into 10 to the power of minus 4 for conductor and for equipment it is 6.06 .06 into 10 to the power of minus 4. Next we need to calculate the force coefficient without the free end flow. For that we need to refer page number 72 that is figure 7.2.8. So here is that. 
so we can also grab the value from this uh, chart or else we can apply this formula so we had applied here the formula to find out this 1.2 plus 0.18 log 10 so this formula is applied over here so we are getting two different values especially for conductor and uh, equipment then the effective slenderness so for that the page number 80 to be referred in code so this is en 1991 part 1 section 4 so here you can see in this column effective slenderness so here it is mentioned for length that is l less than 15 meter we need to consider this equation lambda equal to l divided by b so l we know for conductor it is a span of the conductor and b is the diameter of the conductor so 4 divided by 0 0.2 meter similar like for equipment height of the equipment is 3.3 divided by the diameter of the equipment is 0 0.33 so this value we are getting 10 but in case of this for conductor we need to check here it is mentioned whichever is smaller in case of lambda equal to l by b or lambda equal to 70 so we know that the conductor span is 4 meter and that divided by diameter 0 0.2 means it is coming 200 but we should not consider this 200 as per this text in the code where it is telling that which is smaller so we need to consider 70 next one is we need to find out the end effect factor we can assume here it is a solidity ratio as a 1 so for that we need to refer page number 81 this figure 7.36 7 we need to refer to find the indicative end effect factor as we assumed that slenderness ratio is 1 and based upon the effective slenderness factor 70 for 70 you can see from this chart 70 for solid ratio 1 this is false in end effect factor as uh, 0.9 so which is just above so we can enter here 0 0.9 and similarly for equipment it is 10 the effective sentence factor is 10 considering the solidity ratio as 1 so for 10 we can find out here it is 0 0.68 So accordingly the force coefficient if you see as per the class 7.9.2 page number 71 in EN 1991 section 1 part 1 so here you can see that 7.9.2 class stating that force coefficient coefficient cf equal to cf 0 into phi lambda so we are applying this formula here so we are getting force coefficient for equipment and conductor as 0 0.56 and 0 0.78 respectively we need to multiply this factor into the area and to the intensity wind wind intensity we can able to calculate the wind loads on equipment conductor so here in the table you can see the summary of wind loads so we are just multiplying this area which we had calculated this is a pressure peak velocity pressure 1.7 kN multiplied with equipment height and diameter which are again multiplied with 0 0.56 so we are getting 1.04 this is wind acting parallel to conductor so as we know that uh, 
post insulator is having a equal dimension in both the direction x and y so we can consider the same wind force on the equipment for wind acting perpendicular to conductor span also when coming to the conductor when there is a conductor span which is running along that if the wind is acting along the conductor span there won't be any wind because that the diameter is remain very small like for example it is a, a 22 mm diameter in this uh, calculation uh, 20 mm not only that the longitudinal uh, transverse wind which is uh, perpendicular to the conductor is a major impact so here we can consider the conductor wind on conductor become a zero wind on conductor which is a uh, conductor uh, perpendicular span is a major impact so we can consider this wind on conductor in perpendicular direction which is a perpendicular to conductor span so here again 0.48 is a force coefficient for conductor which we got calculated and uh, peak velocity of pressure is 1.7 kN per square meter the diameter number and uh, length of the conductor span so this three value will give the effective area so applying this formula we can able to find out it is 0.22 kN of force or act on the conductor perpendicular to the its span in terms of wind and coming to the structure we are just multiplying this structure diameter with the uh, pressure due to wind so our structure diameter is uh, 0.22 square hall section as it is a square color section we need to multiply it with the drag coefficient as 2 and also the force coefficient are exposed coefficient because as the circular pipe is having a circular or parabolic shape the wind exposed area get reduced compared to the square or vertical plate system so for that we need to consider some 67 percent or 2 by three two third of the uh, exposed area to be considered so this is what we are multiplying with uh, two by third with the drag coefficient two and with the area and the intensity we are getting 0.5 kN per meter here we are not going to multiply with the area only the diameter we are multiplying so the overall length that is we are considering the structure height as four meter so this four meter we are going to apply in uh, model we are not going to consider in our calculation here so it is the force wind force here displayed for structure is kilonewton per meter in y direction that is perpendicular to conductor span also same 0.5 so in the last row you can find the another one load case for wind it is a 45 which is a diagonal wind load cases it is nothing but it is a square root of above x and y squares summation of squares so similarly for conductor also it is a summation of squares into square root for structure also so this we need to apply it in x and y direction in a robot structural model so next we will look into that snow load calculation so for the snow load calculation we need to refer European standard EN 1991 part 1 section 3 so first that characteristic value of snow loads we need to find out from the technical specifications are can be received from the customer so in the right hand side you can see an excel sheet which we are working on that load calculations in the uh, right, left hand side is the excel calculation and in the right hand side it is a pdf file of en 1991 part 1 section 3 so for characteristic value for snow loads the definition is given in page 18 class 4.1 so for this uh, characteristic values we need to refer the national annexer so that is a summary of this explanation 
So for our calculation purpose, we can consider 2.4 kN per square meter. The exposure coefficient for normal topography, we need to get this CE value from table 5.1 EN 1991 for that page number 22 to be referred. So here you can see the table showing the recommended values of CE that is a coefficient of exposure. So we can consider the normal topography which is 1, the factor CE is 1. Thermal coefficient for that page number 22 in that here you can see the thermal coefficient value CT equal to 1. This thermal coefficient value will be vary according to the thermal transmittance. Suppose the building, in case of building structures, suppose the roof is insulated with the thermal insulation materials, then this factor 1 will get reduced. So according to that, the thermal coefficient to be calculated. But in this, our equipment support structure design, we can consider CT equal to 1, thermal coefficient equal to 1. Next one is the shape coefficient we need to find out from table 5.2. So for that, the page number 23 to be referred. So here in the right hand side of the PDF, you can see that the table number 5.2, which is showing the angle of a pitch of a roof. So this snow load shape coefficient is depends upon the angle of slope with respect to the horizontal. Our case, the entire uh, conductor, if you are considering, means it is like linear to the horizontal, that means zero degree we can consider. However, there may be some minor deviations, but we can consider as a zero degree. So for zero degree, we need to calculate this mu1 and mu2. As per this table, mu1 is 0 0.8. In case of alpha is less than or equal to 30 degree, that is pitch is 30 degree. If it is less than, that means we need to consider mu value 1 as 0 0.8. And mu 2 is a uh, equation is given 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 into alpha divided by 30. Alpha is our pitch. So for conductor, we can directly consider 0 0.8 conductor and equipment. And uh, for mu 2, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 here mu value alpha value you can consider as a 0 or if we need to consider the actual value as we have considered here as a conductor deviation as 10 degree in vertical we can also consider that which is showing 1.1 so now we need to calculate the snow intensity of conductor based upon the class 5.2 So in the right hand side PDF, you can see for the uh, persistent or transient design situations, this is the equation to find out the snow intensity and conductor. So we are just multiplying this uh, SK, CE and CT along with the mu1 and the mu2. So mu i definition also given in this class mu i is the snow load shape factor c section 5.3 and annexer b so we had calculated that also so this is what the snow intensity on conductor now this snow intensity we are going to apply on the equipment and conductor so for applying the equipment conductor we just want to multiply this by d square because that equipment if you are looking to that uh, from the top the equipment the snow load is applied only on the uh, plan view so we need to consider the by d square bit. that is a plan area of the equipment so that multiplying by that we are getting 0 0.2 kilo newton so we know already that 330 mm is a diameter of the equipment that is post insulator so by d square by 4 for conductor, we can multiply the length and the diameter and the number of conductor. So with the intensity of uh, snow, so it is 2.6 into, we already know that the span of the conductor is 4 and the diameter is 20 mm. 
so that into two numbers of conductor we are having so applying that we can able to find out the snow loads in kilo newton on conductor so by adding these two we are getting 0.63 kilo newton so with this part one video get completed the next part we will be looking into how to calculate the seismic loads for equipment support structure slenderness check load combination and finally we are going to design the vertical structural member for equipment support structure in robot structural analysis thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates thank you